Thanks for watching Closing Bell South Africa. Well, what a year 2016 has turned out to be for both local and international politics. This week, we're looking at how social media has responded to the release of the State of Capture report and across the Atlantic, the sentiment towards the two presidential nominees in the run-up to the 2016 U.S. presidential election taking place just next week, Tuesday. Now, with us, we have Freddie Herbst, who's from Brands Eye, to talk us through some of the data. Freddie, always good to see you. I can imagine how busy you've been, but walk us through the data and perhaps, you know, starting off in the U.S. Yes, thanks, Gogo. It's, it's been a, a busy year indeed. Let's have a look at these slides and we'll go straight into it. Um, firstly, looking at the U.S. elections, I'll, I'll carry on as soon as we have these slides. It's been a very closely contented race between two distinctly po polarized candidates, and the race is very well underway in, in the um, battleground states. You can see by this graph that Hillary Clinton was really strong in August, faced a dip in September, and gain traction again at the start of November. Surprisingly is the gain that Trump made on social media sentiment in the last week of October following the email leaks for Hillary. But overall conversations about Trump increased by 114% from September to October, which is massive. Mm -hmm. It seems that the accusations against Clinton while she was serving as Secretary of State are of a far bigger concern to voters than Trump's indiscretions in his private life. And rather ironically, we see how citizens turn to abuse Bill Clinton and call him names, but very quick to defend Trump, you know, for his indiscretions. So if we move to the next slide, I'll show you, we've got a great illustration that, that depicts just how close this race is getting in sure. the battle states. Um, we've actually taken that, that visual and put it into a chart for you on the next slide, which shows that they were fairly evenly split in August with Clinton taking the lead in the biggest states of Pennsylvania and Florida. And you can see September saw her losing the lead, but she managed to hold on to New Hampshire and Pennsylvania. In the most recent week's data, there have been a few more shifts as she fought her way back Either way, looking at these dramatic changes, it's clear to see that this is going to be one of the most important elections in U.S. history and that every single vote counts. Lastly, on the next slide, you'll see we, we looked into, I don't know if you're aware or, or caught wind of how Donald Trump kept seeding information about everything being rigged. Mm. So between the drama around the DNC and the WikiLeaks releases about candidate Bernie Sanders being kicked out of the race and complaints in September that Clinton had rigged the debate because she went and met moderators beforehand, Quite a concerning fact is that 4% of all conversations discuss this rigged system. And you can see on the chart there that these were spiked hugely by Trump seeding this conversation. The concerning insight here that is 4% was about the rigging, whereas 0.4% was discussing foreign policy and 1.2% was speaking about health care, the things that you think people would really be concerned about around a, an election. So for every spike in, in, in this conversation, it was clearly in, instigated by Donald Trump. Okay, we can move on. It's interesting because I take it uh, the battleground certainly does continue because both these candidates want to move on to making America great again. But the sentiment is uh, uh, quite vast and wide. Uh, uh, from an international perspective, are there, are there any other commentators who've commented on uh, the development so far in the polls? It has been a massive, massive data set and there's conversation all around the world. We specifically are focusing on those battleground states because those are really the ones that are going to dictate the outcome of this election. Um, just on those battleground states, we're working on a data set of 20 million mentions um, mm. online. So, shall we move to the next slide? Yes, we will, and that's, uh, that entails the trend of the week where we shift our focus this time to South African politics. Yes. Well, certainly what a week it's been in South African politics, too, with the outgoing public protector to Lima Doncela's state capture report ordered to be released on Wednesday afternoon in what turned out to be a very dramatic day out in the courts, right? Enormously dramatic. You know, yesterday there were 150,000 mentions online, particularly pertaining to the state capture report. Most people were mentioning advocate Tembeka Gukatobi, singing his praises, saying they thought he was on fire. A lot of conversation also around the fact that those implicated in the report seemed to already know that they were implicated. Mm. And many also commented that, <laughs> that President Zuma's lawyers looked rather afraid. Mm. Uh, so to keep with that theme though, any news about ESCOM? As we understood, it's been mentioned 800 times in the Public Protector's report. It has, and I haven't checked into that today, but it leads nicely into our next slide. You'll see some of the humor that came out about Brian Malefe and his claims about that report. 
Uh, last night, South Africans once again. Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I, I can't stop laughing every time I see this. But again, as South Africans traditionally are very humorous, we excelled in our social wit. This is depicting the Eskom boss, Brian Molefe, who tried to explain his movements of being in Saxonwold, where the Gupta family just happens to have a home, saying he may have been visiting a Shabin in the area. So <laughs> you can clearly see that everyone's looking for the shooting. I also saw it came by a few memes. I know Jake was one of the highlights we had last week, and a few people uh, depicted the 600 million being offered, and Jake being a symbol of one of the ministers uh, vigorously <laughs> signing yes. uh, the papers to agree to some of these recommendations. So quite an interesting week it's been, and again, some humor coming through there. It has been, and luckily, because life is short, and um, we can't take these things too seriously. But a very serious topic, the U.S. elections, and uh, we're going to watch these next four days very closely because still a lot of things are going to happen. What we have seen is the Democrats in true traditional form have been rallying, and you've seen Obama out there, you've seen Bernie Sanders out there, so oh. anything can happen. Let's see. Interesting week ahead. Fair. Freddie, thank you so much for your time today. Always a pleasure speaking to you. That was Freddie Habs, who's from Brands Eye. Thank you, Gugu.